All right, what we're gonna do in this tutorial is we are going to solve a word problem by setting up a system of equations. All right, what we're gonna do is we are going to write an equation that represents Diego's situation. And then we're gonna set up an equation that represents Lynn's situation. And what we're gonna do is set up our equation in y equals mx plus b form. All right, so what we're gonna do is we're gonna go back and figure out what the slope of our equation is going to be. And remember, the variable m in our equation represents slope, and slope represents a rate of change of our y values as compared to our x values. And the y-intercept would be where would our line cross the y-axis on our coordinate plane. In other words, when x is zero, where would y be located? And sometimes we refer to this as the starting point. And you'll see what I'm talking about when we set up Diego's equation. So the first thing that we notice here is that Diego actually has $11 before he even begins saving money. So what that really means is at zero weeks before he starts saving, he has $11. So what we're going to do is substitute B with $11. That's what I mean by where we actually start. Now, adding on to that $11 is going to be how much Diego actually saves, which is $5 each week. Now, what we should understand is that the terminology each indicates a rate. We can write $5 each week as $5 per individual week. However, because 5 over 1 can be simplified to 5, we are going to substitute m, which is our slope, with only the number 5, with the understanding that it's really 5 over 1. Because remember, slope really is a rate, which is a comparison of two different units. In this case, it is a comparison of money compared to time. In this case, that time being weeks. And then we just write our variable x after our slope of 5. Now, if we were to plug in the number of weeks that Diego was saving and multiply by 5 and then add to the $11 that he started with, that would be equal to y, which is how much money he has in total. So this equation right here represents Diego's situation. Now, let's take a look at Lynn's situation. So it says that she starts off with $60, or he. I don't know if Lynn is a he or she. But anyway, so Lynn starts with $60. So I'm going to substitute B with 60. Now we have to be very careful here. Now we see that it says that she spends $2 per week. So we can see that the language here sounds like a rate. So this $2 is going to be our slope. However, we should recognize that our slope is actually going to be negative two. And here's why. And that is because when you spend money, you are losing money. So if you think about it, Lynn starts with $60 and Lynn is starting to spend money on her art supplies. So she is going to be losing some of her $60. So what we're going to do is substitute M here with negative two. And then we would multiply that loss of $2 a week by the number of weeks represented by the variable X. And if we multiply the product of negative two by the number of weeks and add it to 60, that is going to give us a total of money that Lynn has. So one thing that we should identify right off the bat is that the rate for Diego is a positive rate. He is saving money and the rate for Lynn is a negative rate. She is losing money. Okay, now what we have to do is figure out at what week will they have the same amount of money. And we also have to figure out how much money that will actually be. So after you have set up both of your equations in y equals mx plus b form, what you can do is take everything after the equal sign for both equations and take those expressions and you can set them equal to each other. And by doing this, that leaves us with one variable that we can solve for. In this situation, that variable is x, which represents the number of weeks. So by solving for x with this equation right here, that will tell us at which week Lynn and Diego have the same amount of money. 
So what we're going to do now is we're going to make sure that all of our terms with a variable and a coefficient are on the left side of our equal sign and all of our constants are going to be on the right side of our equation. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to rewrite 5x here and I'm going to take this x term on the other side of our equal sign, this negative 2x, and write the opposite and write it on the other side. So I'm going to write plus 2x. So basically I just move this term to the other side of the equal sign by writing the opposite. And now we are going to combine our constants. So I'm just going to take this positive 60 and keep it where it is, which is on the right side of our equal sign. And I'm going to take this positive 11 and move it on the other side by writing minus 11. Now we have two terms on the left that are like terms and we can combine those, which is 7x. And on the right hand side, 60 take away 11 is 49. And at this point, using a little mental math, we know that 7 times 7 is 49. So x equals 7 weeks. All right, so we now know that at the seven week mark that Lynn and Diego have the same amount of money. Well, how much money is that? Well, to find out, all we have to do is take one of our two original equations and plug seven in for that equation. So let's just take Diego's equation, which is y equals 5x, and we're going to substitute x with 7 and add $11. So if we multiply $5 by 7 weeks, that's $35. And if we add it to the $11 that he started with, that would give him $46 after seven weeks, which is our answer. So we would say seven weeks later, Lynn and Diego would each have $46. Now, if we were to graph both of these equations on the coordinate plane, they would intersect at a single point. And that point of intersection would be seven 46. So we would say that 746 is a solution that would satisfy both equations. So this is a solution to this particular system of equations. Hey, I just want to say thanks for checking out this math tutorial. Please don't forget to hit that subscription button and activate notifications so you can be informed as I upload new math tutorials that just might help you with your math homework. Until next time, this is Shane Masonette with Masonette Math.